So it's been really tremendous over the past few years to see the research and the movements taking place across our nation that are focused on hope. And one in particular that I'm reminded of is President Barack Obama's campaign that was a movement of hope that inspired us to think about what is the nation that we want and that we're worthy of, and how do we come together to fight for it? And so as we've seen how transformational the power of hope can be, it has become a core part of our work at Ideas X Lab, where we leverage the power of arts and culture to support communities as they drive towards improved health and well-being. And it was during an urban-rural exchange with Middle and high school students a few years ago in Robinson Forest, where we came together and were going through some um, artist-led engagements, and we were asking these ho young people about hope, and some of them said, hope is dangerous. Hope always fails you. And so as we were sitting around the fire that night, I was thinking about my past as a young person, and could I think about and identify the places where I saw hope in the past for me and how that had impacted me. And so as I'm talking about hope, I'm talking about hope related to hope theory, which comes out of research from Dr. Snyder and others and breaks down into hope into three components. Can you set goals for yourself in the future that are uncertain? Can you envision multiple pathways, A, B, C, maybe all the way to path C, that you need to go, to go down to achieve your goals? And do you have the agency so the necessary strength and the ability to rally resources to be able to achieve what you're seeking to accomplish. And so as I was thinking about that, my mind went to the summer before my junior year of high school. So this was the summer when I was outed as being gay to my parents. And so for the next year, my parents and the church and school and myself were in a bit of a battle of can and how can Josh show up as himself, can he? And the answer was no. And so by the time we got to the beginning of my senior year, we were at an impasse. And so the there were two pathways that were, that were ones that I had to choose between. And so one was to move out and to stay in the area close to my siblings, I'm the oldest of five, close to my friends, but with no savings and potentially no place to live, and maybe not even a school to graduate from. Or path B to move in with family in Southern Indiana, my aunt is with me here tonight, and to be able to finish high school. And so I, as I was reflecting on what hope meant for me, the goal that I had set for myself was to graduate from college. Because I knew in my understanding of the world at that point was that would be how I created a successful future for myself. And so as we think about hope in this context, I want you all to think just for a moment about it a decision or a goal you made in the past, and to think about all of the steps that you had to go to achieve that, and then imagine if you didn't set goals at all, because life, those circumstances, has taught you that it was too dangerous. And so as we've done our work in Louisville Smoketown neighborhood and other communities through our Heal Community approach, we've seen how arts and culture can bring community together to identify priorities and action plans for change. And so in, Louisville, in Smoketown specifically, we heard beautification and safety were two of the priorities. And so as we went to understand what that meant, we learned that it was about the concentrated outdoor advertising in the neighborhood. So Smoketown is the oldest African-American neighborhood in the state of Kentucky. It's over 152 years old. And like many marginalized communities, there is a heavy concentration of outdoor ads that look like these for gun shows, for drug-sniffing dogs, for cheap lawyers. And the research actually shows that this concentration of advertising creates a social toxin. And so to combat that, we created an initiative called One Poem at a Time. So this was created by artist Hannah Drake, along with our team members at Ideas X Lab, and we replaced a whole series of billboards with photographs that I took of community and community members and paired them with one lines of poetry. And to kick off this initiative, we held a historical poetry walk. So as we walked around with stakeholders and with policymakers past the new billboards and the existing ones, we were hearing from poets about the cultural heritage of the neighborhood.
and thinking about how as a neighborhood we could come together collectively around policy change to impact this type of advertising. And so as this initiative was taking place, we looked across the street and all of a sudden, two liquor stores, new signs popped up. And they had both applied for liquor licenses and no one had been notified. And so the neighborhood, already having come together, shifted its policy focus. And what we wanted to do was to impact and defeat those liquor stores from those licenses being made available. And what we wanted to do in addition to that was to impact the policy of how residents are notified that someone has applied to be able to sell alcohol. And so our neighborhood came together and rallied and submitted over 5,000 letters to Frankfurt and went to meetings at Louisville Metro Hall. And we were able to successfully make the argument with data from the Louisville Health Equity Report about why our neighborhood didn't need additional resources for alcohol. And those two liquor stores were both defeated. Then we saw the policy change. So now these huge yellow neon signs are required if you apply to be able to sell alcohol. And so a few months later, family dollar stores across Louisville, over 20 of them, all applied for liquor licenses. Now they weren't in Smoketown, but they were in many other communities who did not need additional places for people to purchase alcohol. And so those communities partnered with the leaders from our community who led this charge and were able to defeat all of those liquor licenses from being granted. And so when we talk about the power of arts and artists and of culture to drive change in community, this is a really tremendous example of seeing how that capacity can be built when so many people come together. And this has just been the beginning for us. So at Mazik Middle School, We've been working with a group of artists and young people who came together around environmental health. And so they designed a comic book together that serves as their policy recommendation paper for what they want to impact in the environment. And the superheroes and sheroes are designed and inspired by community members and, their stu and students from the school. And this was something that they were able to present to the Board of Education as a demonstration of learning. These are the policies that we believe we can change both in our school and in the community. And in the Justice League, which is an after-school program that's also artist-led, young people are coming together around so social justice. And they're organizing to participate in the National School Walkout after the Parkland shooting. And they've demonstrated a change from 6.3 to 9 on a 10-point scale in their ability to advocate for themselves and for others by participating in a co-creation process together. And so as we think about a national movement around hope, we see things like the Aspen Institute and their partners releasing a report and starting a movement that looks at how we can take holistic approaches to engaging young people. How are we addressing social, emotional, and academic learning? Which is very much in line with the work that we are now starting to do here in Louisville, which is a two-year co-creation process where artists and young people are coming together to co-create projects to cultivate hope and to impact emotional well-being with the creation of something replicable like a toolkit coming out of it so that it can be scaled even more broadly. And this is building on the process evaluation that University of Louisville Commonwealth Institute of Kentucky conducted on our HEAL community approach that showed that this type of model can support collective identity development and capacity building, community engagement, and the cultivation of hope. And so as we have been designing this project, we're working with U of L's Center for Creative Place Healing to do the research on this two-year initiative as we move forward. And one of the things that's really important to us is to think about the artists that we engage. And how are we thinking about the intersectional identities of the young people that we're working with? And can they envision themselves in those artists? And can they be can that serve as a way for them to envision a new future for themselves? And so one of the things that I read recently was a letter to my son by ta Coates. And it says, my wish for you is that you feel no need to constrict yourself to make other people comfortable. And this is very much in line with how we think about engaging young people and engaging 
um, and inspiring people to drive change. And so my team member, Hannah Drake, has a poem called Power, where she says, there is someone waiting for you to be all you can be so that they can be all that they can be. And all of this reminds me of why it is so important to show up, as I do, in these types of spaces as a gay man in makeup who's androgynous. Because if we don't have people that can demonstrate a new way forward, how are we ever going to be able to make that type of change? And so as we look to seeing these young people coming together to advocate for policy change through poetry and petitioning the superintendent to be able to participate in a walkout because of arts and culture-based programming that they've created, we see tremendous potential for the, for the future. And so I'll close with saying that there's a quote from Edith Wharton that says, there are two ways of spreading light to be the candle or the mirror that reflects it. And so as I think about community building and building a culture of hope, to be, being the candle or the mirror that reflects it, I see as one of the roles for artists as we move forward in creating a future worthy of both our efforts and our lives. Thank you.